Hello and welcome to week whatever of the 2024 baking challenge. It has been a very long, stressful, depressing week, and I feel like that absolutely calls for sugar. So we are making St. Louis gooey butter cake. Grab your ingredients, try to find a smile, and let's bake. St. Louis gooey butter cake is something incredibly special. Don't you dare call it ooey gooey butter cake. That is not what it is. This is St. Louis gooey butter cake. It's a funny story because it was actually created on accident. A baker made a mistake and boom, all of a sudden the Midwest has the most amazing, delicious, fantastic dream dessert. To start off with, we are going to have a small bowl you have got three tablespoons, yes, three tablespoons of room temperature milk, gross, I know, two tablespoons of lukewarm water, that's all in here, so gross, um, that's okay, and two teaspoons of active dry yeast. All right, you're gonna give that a little mix gently. my spatula and then you're going to set that aside. So what this is going to do is this is going to start activating the yeast. I should pause and explain exactly what a gooey butter cake is. You have a cake base and then you have the filling. Um, so it's essentially a layer cake except the center of the cake is well sugar and butter. <laughs> and a few other things, but mostly sugar and butter. And it turns out fantastic, and it is one of my favorite treats. I've never made it before, so this is very exciting. All right, grab your mixer and the rest of the ingredients for your cake, and I'll see you back. Okay, into the bowl of your mixing, you are going to have six tablespoons of butter, room temperature, so at least 65 degrees. You're going to have three-fourths of a tablespoon of salt and three tablespoons of sugar. Tablespoons? Yes, tablespoons. I am going to apologize in advance because the child is playing games with his friends and it's very loud. Also, this was a half uh, tablespoon, by the way, so there you go. <laughs> I'm making all kinds of interesting decisions tonight with this. All right, you're gonna mix up your butter, sugar, and your salt. All right, while that's mixing, I'm gonna crack my room temperature egg. Everything's gotta be room temperature for some reason, at least for the cake part. So let me get that egg cracked. Oh, there's a shell. There we go, got it out. Okay. So you're gonna get your egg cracked. You're gonna get your butter and your sugar mixture going. You are going to want to scrape down the sides of your bowl before you add your egg. I am making this on a Thursday night. This is like almost a four hour bake and I have not been getting up and doing this in the mornings because I have to work. So not enough time. All right, got my sides scraped. Gonna go ahead and get this kicked off again. And in goes the egg. Okay. All right. You want to get that pretty good and mixed before you add in the flour. Um, so my bowl is not balanced. This is the new machine. 
And I think I'm gonna have to get on the Mr. Mixer site and get one of those springs. Um, if you have a KitchenAid and your paddle is not getting down into the bowl, go look up Mr. Mixer. Um, it is this fantastic company and they work on KitchenAids. They have a ton of aftermarket parts and things. And one of those things is a ring that you can put on there to make sure that that paddle goes to the bottom of your bowl. That way you're not leaving ingredients in there. All right, to this, we are going to add our flour, which is one and three fourths of a cup of flour. So let me grab that because I did not measure anything out. Oh, my flour's on the counter. Um, I did not measure anything out ahead of time because I got off work, I had a quick dinner, and here we are. So what did I say? One and three fourths cup, okay. Yeah, I'm not well prepared for today, and that's all right. All right, three plus four is uh, seven. So I need seven of these one fourth cups. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on low while I do this. So that's one, two, three, plus my cup, which is one, two, three, and four. While I'm sitting here thinking about this, I also believe that I did not add enough of the water because I was using a half a tablespoon instead of a full. So let me add a little bit more to that. There we go. It's fine. All right, it's a very crumbly mixture in here. Oh, you're supposed to add the flour and yeast mixture alternating in between. Oops. See, this is why you shouldn't bake when you're tired, friends. Just don't do it. You're gonna make mistakes. So, my bad. <laughs> It's fine. Yep, that is a cake mixture. And you're supposed to end with the flour. Scrape your bowl as needed and then mix again. Mine is kind of a stiff consistency probably because I got the directions out of order and I do apologize. Um, I have actually been trying to get this bake done all week <laughs> and here we are at the 11th hour getting it done. So I have loved this challenge so much, um, but it is definitely, definitely a challenge as far as time constraints, especially now that I am back in the corporate world. So. All right, let's give that another go. Mm. Mine's a little dry. I am gonna add just a little bit more water to mine um, because I am not comfortable with how dry it is. So I'm just gonna add like another half a tablespoon of water see how that goes. It's definitely getting better there. Okay. All right. It's not gonna be a cake batter. I know it says cake. It's not gonna be a cake batter. You're looking for more like a dough. It's a very firm, almost bread-like, but very dense. That's what we're going for, okay? 
and mine has hit that mark. I probably added a little too much water. At this point, I don't care. <laughs> so you're gonna make sure you get all of your dough out. And then we're gonna backtrack to the very first step of this, which was to grease a 13 by nine baking pan. I am so sorry. Use your Pam, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, I probably over greased mine and my dough is a little too wet, but again, it's been a week. So here we go. <laughs> it's probably going to be easier for you if you use your hands. Okay. This is going to rise. Remember, this is a yeast dough, so it is going to rise. You just want to make sure you're covering the bottom. It doesn't have to be up the sides. It just has to cover the bottom. Okay, so just has to cover the bottom. I just don't want any of my filling to get underneath there or the top layer. It's not really filling because nothing is gonna go on top of it. It's just a top layer of cake. I'm using that term very loosely. Okay, what you're going to do with this is you are going to cover it and let it rise about two and a half hours, okay? During that rise time, just don't worry about anything. At the end of the rising time, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then we're gonna make the topping. So I'll see you back in about two hours. So in true form for this week, my cake did not rise. I was worried about that. It is really cold in here tonight. I didn't want to turn on the furnace or turn the furnace up because I'm being stubborn. Midwesterners know what it's like going to be warm again in like two days so we will just layer up and not make anything that requires yeast to rise so I went ahead and skipped an hour my crust my the bottom part of my cake is just going to be really dense and not all that great and I'm okay with that because that's just how the week is we're going to make the filling I have my oven preheating to 350 in a mixing bowl, you're going to uh, mix up 12 tablespoons of room temperature butter, unsalted, and one and a half cups of granulated sugar plus a half a teaspoon of salt. Hopefully this teeny tiny bowl that came with this mixer is gonna get the job done. Um, I thought it was so cute and that I would probably never ever use it, but here I am. So once that is thoroughly mixed, you're going to, oh, I forgot. See, cause I'm forgetting things cause I'm exhausted. In a separate bowl, you're going to mix together a fourth of a cup of light corn syrup, two tablespoons of water, two and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oh, two and a half teaspoons. See, I didn't add that much. And I thought it seemed off, so we're just gonna do what I do best with vanilla and wing it because nothing else is measured correctly in here, so why not? You're gonna mix that up because we are going to be alternating. In a couple minutes, we still have to add the egg to this. Um, scrape the sides of the bowl and add the egg. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother scraping the sides of any bowl. I don't care that much. I've already made so many mistakes with this recipe that I'm not, I don't think it matters. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. I don't think it matters. All right, we're gonna add the egg. That's looking pretty good. I will scrape the sides of the bowl this time though. I'll do it this time. Oh good, the oven is ready. Let me turn this down to half speed. There, okay, turn it off. This little bowl is not too shabby. I like this. 
Okay. Okay, I know I say that a lot. So we're going to add one and one fourth cups of flour alternating with our corn syrup mix, ending with the flour. Okie dokie, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the fourth of a cup first, or the half, I'll do the half. Why not? All right, there's the flour. And here is like half of my syrup mixture. Then we're gonna do the other half of the flour mixture, of the flour mixture, it's not a mixture, it's just straight flour. And then we will do the rest of the corn syrup mix. And then we're gonna do our fourth a cup of flour. Now, sometimes when you buy gooey butter cake in the store, it has a very yellow look to it. They're really playing up the butter factor and I can almost guarantee that that's a food color additive. You're not gonna get that bright yellow color with homemade. It's probably going to get a little golden looking when we bake it, but don't expect that insane pop of color. At least I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna scrape the sides of my bowl here. And give it another, another good mix. So 30 seconds more, we're gonna mix this. That's probably more than 30 seconds. I don't care. Down goes the bowl. Let's see if I can get it off of here now. <laughs> here we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to spoon this topping over the cake, the risen, and mine did rise a little bit. I'm being slightly impatient because it's late and I'm tired and just done with the world right now, but that's okay. So you're just gonna spoon this over like so. It's very light and fluffy. Um, this is not, you guys, this can't even claim to be a healthy recipe, all right? There is so much sugar <laughs> in this recipe. Um, that it's, yeah, I mean, this is like, don't eat more than one little piece of this or you're going to make yourself sick. That's how much sugar is in here between the crust and the topping. It's so sugary, but so good using an offset spatula. And if you do not know what an offset spatula is, this is an offset spatula. I have several of these in different sizes and shapes. I get mine from Wilton. I'll put a link below. They're the best. I've had these for, I don't know, like a decade longer. So you're going to use that spatula to kind of even this out. We're going to go all the way. Are we going all the way to the edges? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to go all the way to the edges and try to make it a nice, smooth, even layer. Okay, okay. This is the part where I get a little obsessive whenever something is supposed to be smoothed across and even on the top. I'm, I'm gonna work at it until it's correct. I can't help myself. 
It's like when I eat M&Ms and I color code them first. Yes, I do. And I'm okay with that. It's just one of my little personality quirks. All right, there we go. Let me get this out of the way. This is going to go into the oven. If you're using a metal pan for about 30 minutes, if you're using a glass pan or a ceramic, about 45. The cake is going to rise and fall in like waves and have a golden brown top, but the center is still going to be liquid when it's done, okay? This is one of those incredibly deceptive kind of cakes. This is going to be liquid. You're gonna take the cake out and cool it completely in the pan then you're gonna dust it with confectioner sugar. Now, if you have never dusted anything with confectioner sugar, what have you been doing with your life? And I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do that and make it look like totally professional. You're gonna to wanna to get one of these mesh strainers. I love these. I have a set of three in different sizes. I will post the link below. You put your sugar in top and then you just tap, 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 tap all over the top, okay? Then we're gonna cut it, we're gonna eat it, and we're gonna see what it tastes like. Real fast, because I will absolutely forget later, this is not a dessert that is stored outside of the refrigerator, okay? The eggs, the sugar, the gooeyness, you're gonna want to store leftovers in the refrigerator well wrapped, okay? Just did not want to forget that. There you go. <laughs> I overbaked my cake. Um, I had the issue with the cake base not rising. That doesn't seem to be a mistake now. It it rose in the oven. I have a very large cake to topping ratio. Not thrilled about that. Um, and I, I did overbake it. I don't know if you can hear this. Um, my cake wasn't getting that golden color. And if you've been here from the beginning and you remember the debacle with the butter, bacon, molasses tarts, all the eggs, mine didn't bake correctly. I ate it anyways. I got violently ill. Oof. There's egg in this. I was a little paranoid. That's okay. We're going to see how it tastes. It smells like gooey butter cake. Um, again, this should be opposite. You should have this much crust and this much filling. But here we are, and uh, it is what it is. Okay. Okay, the cake part is honestly more like a sweet bread. It has the consistency and texture of bread, but it is very sweet. The filling is a delight. I wish that there were two times the amount of um, topping on this. I like the crunch on the top. I think it's nice. It's not like hard. It's not break your teeth. It's not like um, burned. So it's got a nice crunch to the top where normal gooey butter cake does not. It's very soft on the top. You're gonna to have some, some denseness around the edges, but that's pretty much it. I like this, even though I messed up the recipe completely from start to finish, I'm gonna have this for breakfast. So successful bake, especially if you actually follow directions, don't be like me. <laughs> don't let your depression cloud your baking mind and your exhaustion. Just if you're too tired to bake, put it off a day and then follow the directions. Well, that is it for week number 45. I hope that you were able to bake a successful St. Louis gooey butter cake, not ooey gooey butter cake, St. Louis gooey butter cake. It came from here. It's, it's a tradition. All right. Don't, don't mess with traditions. Be respectful, please. Um, 
If you haven't already, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. I put out one of these every single week um, on Saturday mornings, at least until the end of the year. I don't know what direction this channel is going to go in when this challenge is over with. Um, I've enjoyed every second of it, so we'll see. Also, you can head over to the Facebook page. Every Wednesday morning, I'm going to post the name of what we will be baking and the ingredient list. That way, you can decide if you want to bake along and you can get your shopping done in time. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.